right to left. Cooper back to throw it. Here comes the blitz. Hayes picks it up. Gives Cooper time. He's got a man. Kroll, touchdown, Central Michigan. They give it to him. For the second straight year, Central Michigan defeated Northern Illinois, earning John Bonamigo his first win in the Mid-American Conference. We've got the breakdown for you next on Chippewa Rewind. It's a home game, all right? It's homecoming. Let's play together. Let's play with pride. Let's play with toughness. Let's go win this game, all right? Let's go. The Chippewas did win the game on Saturday, 29 to 19 against the Huskies to open MAC play. Welcome into Chippewa Rewind presented by the Morning Sun. I'm Adam Jaxa alongside head coach John Bonamigo. Well, it may not have been pretty, but you're 1-0 in the conference. Big win on Saturday, Coach. Uh, it was great to get home. Great to get a win on homecoming. Started the uh, max season off the right way. Uh, came out a little slow in the first half, but uh, it was great to uh, see us get a comeback win and a big win at home. Well, let's jump right into the highlights, Coach. Cooper Rush throws a pick on that first possession. Yeah, um, you know, their kid does a great job. I think that's his fourth pick on the year. Uh, Great anticipation by him, got a good break on the ball and probably, you know, just a little bit off target. It was tough going in the early game, throwing into the wind. Uh, not, certainly not the way we wanted to start the game, uh, but again, it's, it's how you finish that really counts. And then after they get that interception, defense can't quite hold them out of the end zone. They get the first points. It's 7 to nothing early on. They just do a good job there, getting a, a good push up the middle. and, and uh, they just executed better than we did early on in that game. Picture perfect start for the visitors. They get a field goal after that. Stop you guys again. It's 10 to nothing. How important was on your next drive to get some points and get that field goal for Brian Eby? Well, absolutely. Uh, to be able to get a drive going, come away with points. I think we had a, our only penalty of the game in that drive. We we're hoping to get a touchdown, but great job there by Brian and knocking that one through. And again, very tough conditions. And uh, it was great to be on the, on the scoreboard finally. Big part of this game was late in the second quarter. You get a goal line stand on four straight stops uh, to keep them out of the end zone. Again, that defense coming together, never quitting, playing hard. Uh, you know, next play up. Hamilton's able to keep Hare out of the end zone and then take us through this fourth down play. Great pursuit up the middle and you drop him for a four yard loss to get the football. Yeah, again, uh, same play they tried to run on their touchdown. We got a very gap sound right there, get the ball bounced outside where it's not supposed to go, where we get uh, second level pursuit to the point of attack. And again, great defense. Good job by uh, everybody on the field there. It remains 10 to three, they stop you. And then you're going to get the football back. Did you see on this kick, was it blocked or did he just shank he it out of He shanked it. Uh, we thought we had gotten a piece of it. The end result is the same. Uh, we did do a good job of bringing pressure there. Uh, he shanked it. We get the ball in, uh, in our end of the field and a great opportunity right here at the end of the half. And then take us through the last seconds of the first half. Uh, the last play, you get the catch. I think about 17 seconds left. You end up spiking it with five. Yeah. What did you see? Well, we had, we, had a, we had a timeout left, uh, and it was really miscommunication between myself and Coach Watts up in the box. He thought we were going to use the timeout. I expected us to go ahead and run another play. You know, once that clock's running, it, 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 uh, it burns down really quick. I think there was uh, 25 seconds on the clock when, we, when they started it. So, uh, you know, not the way we ended it. That was, um, I'll take responsibility for that miscommunication. It's, it's my job. And we probably should have gone up and spiked it or run a play. Uh, wanted to keep the time out in my back pocket in case we did complete a pass in bounds so we could still uh, get the field goal kicked if we didn't get, the, get a touchdown out of it. So. so a missed field goal at the end of the half, just wide, 10-3 to is the score going into the break. What were your thoughts after the first 30 minutes of play? Well, obviously, we weren't happy with where we were at, but we also uh, have a pretty mentally tough team. And uh, so we got together offensively, defensively, talked about you know what we were seeing, what adjustments we needed to make. We'll look at some of the adjustments and break down the second half when we come back on Chippewa Rewind.
Welcome back to Chippewa Rewind. The Chippewas trailing 10 to 3 at the break on homecoming. And coach, what kind of adjustments did you make coming out of halftime going into that third quarter? Well, defensively, we felt like we, you know, we understood what they were, what we were getting. We just had to do a little bit better job of being gap sound and really getting off the of blocks and finishing tackles. It right. almost seems like you guys like playing from behind coming out of that first half because you've done it three weeks in a row and you've come out and gotten that stop to start the first drive. Well, again, you know, that, that credit has to go to our defensive coaches for making the adjustments at halftime and, uh, you know, really the toughness and resiliency of our guys. Well, let's take a look at the highlights, dive into this second half. Chippewas behind 10-3. to 3. NIU gets the football. You get your first fumble recovery of the season as Hare drops it. Yeah, I mean, we've had the ball on the ground several times the, throughout the first four games. This time it kind of bounced our way. Uh, that was just the break we needed to, you know, get things turned around here early and in the grand fashion in the uh, third quarter of the game. That fumble recovery deep in NIU territory, and then Jesse Kroll able to get the touchdown pass from Cooper Rush, another third down completion. Yep. Uh, great job here on the curl. Uh, swing route, just really a curl flat concept. Uh, Cooper, you know, finding the open lane. Jesse doing a great job of catching the ball first and then knifing up uh, north and south, getting in the end zone for the score. It's great to see that. So just like that, we're tied starting the second half. It's 10 to 10. Give credit to NIU. They came back down, got a field goal. It's 13 to 10. But then your offense marches right back down, gets a field goal of your own. It starts with a nice pass to Corey Willis. Yeah, this was a great job. Corey uh, on the, uh, on the uh, in route there. Uh, you can see what kind of quickness he has. Uh, he is uh, developing into a great route runner and a very sure-handed target, uh, one of many that we have for Cooper. Coach, how tough of a throw is that for Cooper? He's rolling to his right and has to throw back across his body. Yeah, I mean, it's it's one of the tougher throws that he has to make. But, uh, you know, uh, again, it, it's all about with the quarterback. It's all about being able to set his feet and then step into the throw. So uh, he had time in, in the pocket to maneuver, get his shoulders around, and, and, uh, and throw a good ball. Later on in the drive, it's a third and nine, and Ben McCord gets his first catch of the day. Yeah, Ben does a nice job here. Uh, Again, breaking the tackle and getting some yards after contact there. Good job by Ben. Great pass by Cooper again. All right, Brian Evey, his shortest kick of the day, only 28 yards. How impressed were you with him yesterday going three for four in those conditions? I've been impressed with Brian since I got here. Uh, he's got a great mentality and a great temperament for the position. Uh, he's a student of his craft. He's able to make adjustments to his technique when necessary. And... Um, we're looking for bigger and greater for things out of him in the future. This is where your team really starts to dominate. You get another fumble recovery as Hamilton's able to get up the middle and cause it, and then he falls on it as well. Yeah, it's a great job here uh, by Jumbo. Uh, Force fumble, uh, gets the recovery, so he gets the, the uh, kind of the football version of a hat trick right there. The only thing that would be left is the scoop and score, but. Uh, you know, again, another big turnover right uh, at a critical part in the game. And, and really, this you're right, that's kind of the ones that really open the floodgates for us. You call him Jumbo. Tell us why. I don't know. That's what everyone else calls him. <laughs> so <laughs> I've just kind of followed suit. I think that nickname was there before I got on the scene. So uh, probably his uh, kind of his physical stature, his demeanor. We move forward, and you go right at him the next play. You get the turnover, and then you go for the home run. You get it again with Jesse Kroll. He was yep. fantastic yesterday. Uh, great job of pass protection there. You see Jare Hayes step up and pick up the blitzing linebacker. Uh, Jesse's got single coverage on the outside. Uh, you know, Cooper steps up, delivers the ball exactly where, we needs to, where it needs to be. And, uh, again, Jesse makes the catch, finds himself in the end zone, and, and uh, great execution on that play. Chippewas take their first lead, 20-13 to 13 in that third quarter, and then they make a quarterback change and bring in Ryan Graham. Was there any adjustments made? It was a quick change. No, I mean, you know, really, you just don't have a lot of time. You don't have much data on a kid like this that's coming in off the bench. You know, you figure that the starter's a starter for a reason. Uh, you know, I don't know if what their thinking was, but... Uh, I was sure happy with the results of his uh, first pass attempt. 
His first pass attempt is to Tim Hamilton, makes another terrific play. He gets an interception. Yeah, baited him really well, read their out, did a nice job of falling back inside and uh, getting the pick. So there's another one for Jumbo. You get the ball again deep in their territory, and uh, it's Rush able to find it to Corey Willis for 22 more yards. This is a great route right here. He absolutely turned this kid around, uh, does a nice job of getting, creating separation, makes it a, a an easy throwing lane for Cooper. Cooper lays it out there for him, and you know, happy to see Corey getting some uh, play time and, and some balls thrown his way. He's a great target, great young player. Spalding got knocked out early with an injury, so you had to ride Hayes late into this game. He gets a touchdown here to extend the lead. Yeah, lane. this is a beautifully executed play. Look at Nick Beamish coming around there on the pull. Uh, Rami's up on the next level. Uh, Jare stays with it, and, and uh, that was just a very well executed play and a great play call by Coach Watts. So we push forward to the fourth quarter, about midway, 8.46 to go. It's 29-19. to 19. They score a touchdown, but I thought this was big. You stopped them from getting the two-point conversion and making it a one-possession game. Yeah, I mean, you know, what you're seeing is a lot of pursuit. Uh, Hare running around uh, for his life there, and... Uh, Backside pursuit, keeping contain here is also really, really big there by uh, Mitch Stanizek because that's the kind of kid that he can turn the corner uh, and now you're dropping people out of coverage. You never know what could happen, but it's a good job of staying dif disciplined and uh, really a great relentless effort by our defense. 29 to 19, still late in the fourth quarter, 4.15 to play. Coach, how about this hit by Kayvon Frazier to punch this, this ball This is out? a great job by Kayvon. He is a big hitter. Uh, he's been doing this all year. Uh, gets one right on the ball. It pops out. And, uh, you know, who else, who else on the bottom of the t on the pile but the uh, jumbo? <laughs> That's the final. That was their last chance, 29-19. to 19, The Chippewas 1-0 and now in the conference. We talk about adversity. Conditions weren't great. You get behind 10 to nothing. You had to be happy coming back and picking up uh, sort of an ugly win yesterday. Well, yeah, I'm never going to apologize for winning. Uh, it was a come-from-behind come uh, win. That's not uh, how we script it. But one of the things that we talk about all the time is we just got to keep playing. One final note, the penalties were down on Saturday, just one for five yards. I know that was something we talked about last week. How impressed were you with the team on Saturday? Very impressed. You know, it's one thing to put the information out there to – to educate them on it. They understand the importance of it. Uh, it's a whole nother thing to be able to go out and, and execute throughout a whole game and, and show the type of discipline that it takes to be a penalty-free team. So uh, we're hoping to see that, con that trend continue uh, as we move down the stretch here, but that was definitely a step, big step in the right direction. A familiar opponent next week for the Chippewas, one that's not well-liked here in Mount Pleasant. We'll take a look at the Broncos when we come back on Chippewa Rewind. Hey CMU fans, experience Central Michigan University and all there is to do around campus by visiting Ticket Central, your one-stop shop for all your favorite CMU events. Ticket Central staff is ready to greet you with a smile and assist you with all your ticketing needs. Whether it be for athletic events, plays, concerts, and more, we've got you covered. For further information, you can visit the atrium of the Event Center Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. or give us a call at 888-347-3872. At Ticket Central, we're here to help get you wherever you want to go. Great locker room footage of the Chippewas after a big win against NIU on Saturday afternoon. Now Central Michigan moves forward and takes on their rivals from Kalamazoo, Western Michigan on Saturday. Coach, how important is that game? It's huge. Um, it's a conference game. It's the next game on the schedule. But more importantly, it's, it's Western Michigan. This is uh, our number one rival. Uh, it's difficult to put into words how much this game means. 
Um, it's something really that, as a player, you have to experience before you fully understand it. There's so many rivalry games in college football. You can look across the entire landscape. What makes this one stick out? You were a part of it before. What makes it so special? Well, again, it's the, um, it's the back and forth between the schools. It's the, the geographic proximity. You know, they're not that far away. Um, it's the overlap that the, uh, that the graduates of both institutions have with one another uh, in the workplace, uh, in school, uh, across really every walk of life. It's, um, it's the competition that's uh, ongoing year, year round in, in every sport, but uh, also in, in recruiting. And, um, you know, it's, it's bragging rights for, for the state. And, um, you know, again, it, it's something that's, uh, for me, highly personal. It's, uh, it's very intense. And uh, it's something that I've looked forward to every single year and I'm um, really looking forward to this year. Coach, to win that game on Saturday, what do you guys have to do? Well, obviously, again, you know, it starts with taking care of the football. It's going to mean playing great defense against a very explosive offense. They've got weapons. They've got great running backs. They've got two excellent uh, receivers in, in Davis and Braverman. They've got a quarterback that is a mobile guy that can run. Uh, he's done a tremendous job in that offense in terms of executing and, and being able to find open receivers. Uh, defensively, they're, they're a great secondary. They're a very good front. They run the football. This will be a great matchup for us. Uh, you know, they beat us last year here at home, so it'll be a big challenge for us to go down to Kalamazoo and try to bring the Cannon Trophy back home to Mount Pleasant. Well, Coach, we wish you the best of luck and hopefully you get that win. Thank you very much. And uh, for everybody that's going to make the trip down to Kalamazoo this weekend, please travel safe. Uh, we look forward to seeing you down there and helping us cheering us on. Thank you. The Chippewas took down the defending MAC champions this past Saturday. They look to take down their rivals this upcoming Saturday. All right, that'll wrap up our show. It's rivalry week for the Chippewas. As we said it, they head to Kalamazoo this Saturday. Make sure you join us again next Monday as we break down the battle for the victory cannon. For head coach John Bonamigo, I'm Adam Jackson. Thanks for joining us and fire up chips. <laughs>